Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, August 10th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. Microsoft Exchange is likely going to remain the gift that gifts on giving. And Orange Zai, who was also instrumental in finding some of the recent vulnerabilities in a Microsoft Exchange, has presented at Black Hat a talk where he talks about some of the specific vulnerabilities or classes of vulnerabilities, really, that were introduced in Exchange 2013. Attackers are at the same time also heavily scanning, for example, for the proxy logon vulnerability and are definitely trying to figure out some of the vulnerability that uh, Orange Sai hinted on, but uh, never really sort of provided uh, sufficient details to actually exploit them. So what this means for a defender is get ready to patch Microsoft Exchange again and again. So uh, better get your playbook down to be able to do it quickly as additional patches will likely be released in the near future. And talking about uh, systems that keep on giving for the bad guys, Synology is warning that botnets are attempting to brute force weak admin credentials specifically for its product. Synology, of course, makes uh, these uh, disk network storage uh, devices. Of course, we have seen over the last few years, many, many Mirai style botnets that go after devices like this. At the same time, we also uh, got a new vulnerability that apparently affects uh, about 20 different manufacturers of uh, routers. Uh, now, many of them are being provided by ISPs. So the brand may not always be that clear uh, that you're using, whether or not you're using a vulnerable router or not. Let's just uh, make this week uh, the router patch week. Uh, if you have uh, some time this week, take a look at your router, make sure that your firmware is up to date. And if not, then get it patched. Patched. Even if your router is not on the list, there is a good chance that, well, over the last few months or so, uh, there was a security relevant update for the device. Well, and Firefox just uh, released recently version 90. So uh, they're hitting a point where they have to worry about three digit uh, version numbers in order to get ready for this. Firefox now announced that they're running an experiment where they will set the version of Firefox in the user agent string to three digits, actually exactly 100 in order to see essentially what breaks. So if in your web logs, you see version 100 for Firefox, not an attack, just part of this experiment. And talking about things that need patching, your messaging app, uh, Natalie uh, Silvanovich, uh, who is working for uh, Google's uh, project uh, Zero, has presented at Black Hat about uh, multiple vulnerabilities that she found in various uh, messaging apps. This includes uh, Facebook Messenger, but also, of course, various products uh, like uh, Signal, Google Duo, and others. The specific problem here was that the vulnerabilities were exploitable without user interaction. We always teach our users don't click on links, but these vulnerabilities will be exploitable without any clicking or the user opening anything but looking at a particular message that arrived. This issue also recently, of course, came up in iMessage, uh, where vulnerabilities like this were exploited to actually infect users' mobile devices. And James Kettle uh, published a nice blog post, also based on a Black Hat talk about some of the security vulnerabilities in HTTP. Two. Now, I've seen in the past a lot being written about HTTP2 security. A lot of it has missed the point, but I think uh, what James is uh, writing here is really important uh, to understand. And what he's focusing here on is uh, proxies. More often, if you are implementing HTTP2 at this point, your application doesn't really care. You implement some kind of proxy that will receive the HTTP2 request 
and then it will be forwarded to the actual web server and the web application as HTTP 1.1. This may, for example, happen if you are behind Cloudflare or similar public cloud-based uh, proxies. And this is exactly sort of where uh, James is uh, hitting at is the translation process between HTTP 2 and HTTP 1.1. Some of the subtleties in how these protocols differ and how this can be exploited in, in some of these proxies in order to, for example, do HTTP request smuggling and similar attacks. Now, all of the bugs being reported here have been patched, but really still a good read to understand these protocols a little bit better. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.